Hi folks and welcome to a new episode of the Adobe at Adobe Behind the Scenes podcast. In the last episode, we were talking with Lucas Reef about the refactoring effort for Adobe.com. And that was a poorly non-technical podcast. In today's show, um, we will be a little bit more technical because what happened in the meantime, we were sitting together and planning with the other engineers in the team where to put the focus on from the technical point of view for this refactoring. And one very important topic for all of us was to make the code um, more readable and maintainable and um, also more stable and secure. And we wanted to have a better separation of logic and markup. And everybody knows once you have JSP components and code uh, in your product, in your application, you, after a while it gets very difficult to maintain it. So what we do it as well, and I'm sure you have the same experience, you start using regular J2E technologies. We added tag libs, we used Java, Beans, and JSTL, and tried to get all these things together and make it more maintainable. But after, at one point, we actually were um, agreed that this is not good enough and it's not what we actually wanted. So we wanted to have something to, for instance, handle the access as and cross-site scripting handling, the protection automatically without being a security ninja. We wanted to have the markup beautiful and readable. And every language we saw was not really possible to force the developer not to mess up with our markup. And that's also the topic of today's show. Don't mess with my markup. Um, so the, the next point was that after we reviewed all the template languages was that with template languages there's a general problem because we did not want to use the flexibility we get with the Java content repository. We did not want to lose the flexibility we have with Apache Sling as our framework. So we all wanted to have these benefits plus on top of very clean templating language. And we actually did something very crazy. So we created a concept. And, and that's what I'm going to show you. We, we created a new templating engine, a new templating engine for Apache Sling. And we called it HTL. That's just the name of the concept for HTML template library. And as I said, it's a purely concept state. But still, I would like to share with you and maybe you know see your opinion and find out if you like it. Let's jump right into it. I prepared a little bit something. I created a content page and I also created a new component in apps behind the scenes episode 2 components content page. And in my JCR content of the CQ page, I created basically behind the scene as the sling resource type. So maybe you already see the first change here. In my component, the component name is content page and our script name is content page HTML. For me personally, this was the most annoying thing or is the most annoying thing. You, you, you get some HTML code and you have to rename it from HTML into JSP, ESP or whatever. And that's why we start, well, why don't we just use HTML as our scripting extension? So that's what happens. And if we look at our code, it's poorly static HTML code. And if I reload it, just some HTML code. Let's switch to my favorite editor. Okay, so in the background is our content page which is rendered from CQ, and this is my code. So I think the first thing usually we do is changing the title. So here it's a static template, static template. Let's see if we can add a JCR title there. Um, just to check it out, do we have a JCR title? Yes, there's a JCR title CRX. I will rename it JCR title 
um, HTL concept. Going to save my page. So you see there's no includes, there's nothing. So for could see in the background, it switched to JCR title. JCR title, HTL concept. And that's because I added it here. So next, let's add h1 and, you know, let's add, maybe there's a page title, let's see. Page title, I don't know if I added this property. So obviously it did not add the property title and let me introduce you another concept. So each expression can have options. That's what we call options. And there is one option that's a default option. So we automatically tell the language if there is no title. So for that's my expression. Um, execute the default option. And the default option tells me there's a string. So if there's no title, print out this string. But actually, you know, there's always a, a JCR title. So let's add the JCR title. And you can see in the background it automatically updated. Now there's JCR title HTL concept. And why don't we just chain it? Default, and at the end we can we can have a string again say no title. So in theory, if we would remove our JCR title and save it, we should see no title in the H1 tag and there is no title. So to double check, let's add a title, title, and we say my new title. I'm sure I have a typo now, but it doesn't matter. So once we reload the page, you see my new title with a little typo. All right. And of course, that's not all we want to do. I just copied some notes over. So when we look at the note structure, there's a note par with a lot of paragraphs. So that was the next thing. We didn't want to have any surrounding blocks and surrounding elements. So let me create a list. Perhaps we just want to display all these elements. So we have a concept that's called block elements. In this case, a list block element and with the scope HTL, that's how we define that it's actually server side rendering. And in this element, I can add either a string depending on the block element or an expression. In this case, it's an expression. And we know we, are, we have a resource. And I want to get the child paragraph. And there, I want to list all the children. It's a resource, so just print out the path. We go to our site, you see all the paths are here visible. And that's all I did. Isn't that amazing? I don't have to do more at this point. And we talked also about another important topic, which was said you don't should not be a security ninja to create the website. So for this we will go more towards the the source code of the generated site. So you right click, open the page source, and you can see all this is already encoded for me and, and it is in the right context. We because we render the template and we, we know the context of your expression and accordingly we apply the necessary um, rules to your expression. To demonstrate it, I created a property XSS. I did not, so I will create a property XSS. So XSS, this is some code. Let's see. Oops. 
here. And for this, let's uh, create a link. Properties, XSS is the value we want to add. And um, for the name, we go with the same. Properties, XSS. But we use here my, my little something code. So what would usually happen? Let's do um, alert. Or let's do complete script block. Script alert hello world. So I hope there are no typos as usual. So now we can see that um, this got ugly completely stripped out. And we see here just an encoded um, hello world. Um, let's say you don't want to show any scripts and like the options with the default value, there are also XSS option and we can say filter HTML. Let's go with single quotes, it's easier to read. And now there is no HTML filtered. When I reload it, you see it just stripped it out and on that side, it's still there in the link because we did not add the special filter. But what we also could do, and that's like the responsibility back to the developer, um, would be to say, well, disable it. And now we see what usually would happen. And it protected us from that. So I will add it back again. Basically, let's say we want to have another title. Um, XSS property is in the repository. And there's also a regular use case that you say if there's something not in the repository, we don't show that. And usually you would have if else statements. And what we created is again, uh, you can imagine it a block statement. So we have data HTL test. And in this block statement, we just say, properties.xss. So we want to say XSS property is in the repository. Let's say we want to do the opposite. You can uh, add a scope and a name to each block statement. We would say um, XSS, um, XSS, uh, wait, what do we say? XSS test and so, sorry. So we can copy that and this is now saved and now we will say if no XSS and then we will say there, there is no XSS property. And if we look at the source code, there's only one H1 and the second one is not there. So let's delete this property. And now we see there's no XSS property. All right. Um, that was, of course, just a very short introduction. I did not show you how we actually deal with logic, how we do recursion, nested templating. And um, yes, there are a lot of topics still open. I hope uh, you liked it. As I said, this is just a concept. Everything is completely subject to change. We don't know if we're going to use it. Um, if you like, please give me feedback. And um, if there's enough interest, perhaps I will share this on Packet Share or on GitHub. Um, um, yeah, that's it. So let me know. Um, thank you so much for watching our podcast. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. And I hope I see you the next time. Uh, thank you very much and bye. Mm -hmm.